All right, this is gonna just be a weird video. I mainly just wanted to show this off. Uh, my other channel, I don't know if anyone's aware of it, I like to upload old commercials and stuff like that. And to do that, you gotta find old tapes with recordings. And that's what kind of actually started this channel as I was looking for spare VCRs and equipment to do that. And then I was like, hey, I wanna show these off. These are cool. So anyway, currently using this uh, Toshiba made RCA because I actually really like it. It does a, a really nice job. Um, and then the SL2710 I'm using for the beta tapes right now. This is a solid workhorse. And uh, so there's the pile of tapes that had nothing good on it. And uh, over here, this is the tapes that did have stuff good on it. Even when I digitize them, I like to hold on to the original tape because I never know if I want to go back and get a better quality copy or whatever. So you just write whatever was on it for my own notes. And then some tapes I still need to go through, you know, just because the label says something that doesn't look interesting, like these are most likely just dubbed movies. You never know what's on them. You never know. See, here's where things get insane. So here's um, storage. There, uh, these, these are all pre-recorded movies. I think these are all beta. Yeah, these are all pre-recorded beta movies. I want to kind of do a presentation of these one day to show them off. Like some of these are still unopened. It's pretty cool. There's a mix of uh, like just tons of recorded off TV tapes and some other stuff. These are all colored tapes. I, I kept the cases for, I have a little decorative display of different colored tapes upstairs. More tapes to go through. These are more pre-recorded beta movies. Uh, what else we got here? More tapes to go through. 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 So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot. But that's not even all of it. Uh, a while ago on Marketplace, I saw an ad for free um, used blank tapes. And the guy was selling them in banker's boxes saying there's like oh, about 38 tapes in a box. I got about a hundred boxes. When I got there, it turns out he had hundreds of boxes, hundreds of boxes full of used, not even labeled. These are all recorded once played once and stored. These are kind of the crappy quality ones. I've got a whole thing of, these are mostly T-160s. I've got another box that's just these BASF T-160s, which are quite good quality. And I picked up six boxes. Yeah, this is all the red BASF. This is all Fuji 160s. Um, one of these bankers boxes I broke up because I had to use for something. So some of those L750s in one of those clear bins was from them. And I've got another box of beta, I think in my car still, I got to remove. Anyway, this is more than a lifetime supply of tapes. And I doubt I'll ever get through all these. My hope is to just go through as many as possible. And this is such a fascinating situation. And I wish I could have saved all the tapes for some sort of archival purpose. The best I can figure, this person recorded every single show they ever watched, either that their family watched or that they watched. These beta tapes are from the early 90s, late 80s. Uh, the red BASF tapes are from 1996. Uh, these ones seem to be from around 1997. And one tape is like maybe a couple days, if that, of programming. So for probably a couple of decades, I would say, this person recorded every show that they watched like that's insane so i'm keeping these and you know if i don't get to them i want to give them away to someone who can find more content stuff that i find boring someone else might find interesting you know not everything's for everyone but like look at that these are not good quality tapes i these cost what like Mid 90s, five bucks a pop, I think, Canadian. I remember them being expensive. This person spent thousands of dollars to record stuff that they never 
watched again. Like, I bet you this tape will be at the end. No label. Yep, at the end, recorded once, played once, stored. That's it. Anyway, if anyone is, is interested where I'm getting the stuff to put on my other channel, um, there it is. Hundreds of blank tapes to go through. And that's why I need so many VCRs. And these are, of course, tapes that I have finished. And I, I want to store these in a more tucked away area. But these are all tapes that I've finished digitizing and I'm just holding on to. Got to have the HD DVD. And uh, more stuff up there. And uh, more tapes. More and more and more. These ones over here I've held on to because I love these. Even if they don't have anything interesting in them. This has got to be the coolest looking blank beta tape ever made. This thing is gorgeous. And I got about six of these. These are my go-to for when I just want to do experiments and try things out on, on beta. They're my absolute favorite. I don't think these have anything with commercials on them. Oh, one hour talking to Americans. Maybe I should go through that one. Just thought I would show where I get all the stuff that I upload for commercials and things like that. And how many tapes it takes to find anything worth value. I find it's maybe 10%. Like 1 in 10 is any good. And even then, like to make it to the channel, maybe 5%. So I go through a lot of tapes and fast forward. Anyway, um, that's all this video is about. Just talking about tapes. Not really going to get into how... I do all the digitizing because I'm going to be perfectly honest, my method is kind of crap and I've been meaning to uh, upgrade. Uh, right now you could call it the technology connections method, but I think the downside with it, so you see I'm a little uh, HDMI to USB capture device, and somewhere behind here is sitting one of these garbage pieces of garbage. I have no complaints about this. This works great. Uh, my only, well, I guess my one complaint is, no, it's with this. This thing, first off, it stretches. So you have a 4x3 input getting stretched to 16x9. No option. Okay. But it washes out. And I don't know a lot about um, what I'm talking about here, but what it seems like to me is that the contrast is just cranked way up, meaning that your brightest bright goes above the threshold that this can handle or the darkest dark goes below. So this goes below the darkest black. Basically the, the gamut, so sort of like the brightness span of the video signal does not fit within what this can do. So you either wash out bright scenes or you lose detail in dark scenes. And there's no way to sort of bring that range in and then fix it in post. Um, what I do sometimes if it's really bad is, is super janky. I have a little potentiometer to bring it down a little bit. And that does help, but again, that just shifts everything down. So that shifts the voltage down that it's riding on, but then you start losing detail in the bottom. And the colors, if the saturation's already really high, like some of these were recorded off of a affiliate that really like to crank the saturation so then they get oversaturated and, and blown out so i've been meaning to find just another one of these to see if maybe this one sucks i bet the quality control on these isn't that great so i have to try a few different ones maybe even a higher quality one give this method just another try i like it because you can get 60p instead of 30p so you get uh, deinterlacing, but you get to keep that sort of smooth, fluid motion that you got with like live TV coverage and stuff. All right, I feel I need to elaborate on that and show what I'm talking about. So I'm in the editor. Editor, this project is set up as 60 frames per second, and the source file here, it's it's widescreen. I I shrink it down when I export from the editor itself. It's just easier that way. Uh, so minutes, seconds, and then frames. So if I go and skip ahead in frames here, so obviously it's more than 30 
and you'll see each frame is unique. There is something happening in each frame. And you'll see that went up to 59, 60. So it is preserving that sort of fluid 60i motion, but it's doing it while deinterlacing, which is nice. So um, yeah, anyway, uh, you don't get that with like a, a DVD recorder, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, this is, it's still blowing out the picture, which is annoying. And it seems to be getting worse, so I think this thing might just need to be replaced with something better. Eh, if anyone's got any suggestions on that. Anyway, this is just a side tangent. Uh, I didn't want to get into talking about that, and I did. Um, okay, bye. Take RCA. Never before at the brick, this RCA brand new 21 inch remote control color TV. Look at it, just $3.99. Take this RCA VHS video cassette recorder with infrared remote, just $2.99. This RCA VHS full size camcorder with variable high speed shutter, animation recording, autofocus, and more, just $9.99. Pregnancy is not a time to diet.